Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm the host here of Buff Best of Us Investors uh, YouTube channel. And there's something been going on that's been bothering me, and I've chosen just to be quiet about it because I didn't think it was really any of my business. And the first thing that kind of lit me up was this. Um, I saw this in the Wall Street Journal, and it was um, on Sunday, March the, the 6th, and it, um, it has uh, quite a two-page article on Kamath. Uh, and Kamath has become kind of a champion of the small investor, and, and I like Kamath. I, I really did. And then I thought, this just is beneath him. Uh, why is he doing this, or why are they doing this? Um, and Kamath has become a carnival broker. Uh, he's the guy who pulls you into the tent to see the bearded lady or the tallest man in the world. And he's becoming something of a celebrity on the on the TV stations about promoting stocks. And, and I, 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 I see this, and I, I saw him do it back on, um, I guess it was October the 6th, he did a real extensive promotion of a, a healthcare company called Clover Health that I have never heard of, and it turned out he is promoting it as a SPAC and he has a sizable investment in it. And so again, I didn't think much of it, but I thought, boy, that's kind of iffy, because uh, as I looked into it, and who were the largest um, healthcare uh, providers, particularly, I'm a senior citizen, so I know something about Medicare, and here's a, a list of them. You can see it here. Uh, Clover's nowhere on it, and it goes down to um, Cigna, who has 2% of the market, and Clover's nowhere on it. Well, that's kind of crazy. And yet, in his video, he really promotes it. So, what I want to do today is dig into this. And if you go no further in this video, and you leave at this point and say, I don't, I'm not interested, just the end of the story is, do not buy Clover Health. This is... This is a SPAC that's a scam, and I am really disappointed in uh, Kamath. Um, and some of the things I'm seeing on, on TV. So I'll get into that a little bit deeper. Be right back. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, the first thing I saw was Kamath on CNBC, and he was talking about one of his SPACs. I, I had seen a number of them. He's done, he did Open Door, and now he was doing Clover Health. And they gave him five, five minutes and 50 seconds of him to just pitch his company. And I thought, that's kind of strange. That's just not right. I, you know, I got, I got, jumped on when I did a video of interviewing a CEO of a mining company as a pump and dump. And here was Kamath for five minutes pumping this unknown health care provider for senior citizens. Let's take a, just a look at it. I'm not going to run the whole thing for you. So shortly after that, I see one of my YouTubers that I watch. Uh, I, I've never seen him. I see, hear his voice, but I never seen him. And he's jumping all over this. In fact, he runs Kamath's full five minute and 50 second pitch. And he says, this is a tremendous stock and this is something you need to get into. And I respect this guy because he was kind of the one who blew the whistle on all the pump and dumpers that, that were using YouTube to promote stocks and increase um, mining companies in particular's net worth in, in very short term. So I respected him. And then of late, then I saw another piece on, um, on, on uh, CNBC that revealed that Clover was under investigation by the federal agencies because what they were projecting and what they were saying about Clover 
uh, just wasn't true. So here's a here's a piece of that video to to give you some some take on it. Welcome back to Squawk Box. We've got an update now on a story that we told you about yesterday. Shares of Clover Health falling after Hindenburg Research published a critical report on the seller of a medic a Medicare backed insurance plans calling it a, quote, broken business. Investor Chamath Palihapitiya holds a 27 per sake in Clover and brought it public through a SPAC. In a response issued just moments ago, Clover saying that Hindenburg's report is, quote, rife with ad hominem attacks, sweeping inaccuracies and gross mischaracterizations. It's also now saying that Hindenburg did not contact Clover prior to publishing that report. But importantly, Clover said this morning that it did receive a notice of an SEC investigation and says it intends to fully cooperate. And perhaps more importantly, it acknowledges that Hindenburg's research uh, saying that there is a Department of Justice inquiry taking place and that they're cooperating with that inquiry was in fact true and something that they did not disclose. They said they did not disclose it at the behest of their lawyers who said that it would not necessarily be required to be disclosed, arguing that it was not material but that in fact, Chamath Pali Hapatia and others uh, and people involved in this uh, transaction clearly knew about it as part of the diligence process in advance. Of course, the public did not know about that in advance. They're now saying they didn't have to tell the public about it in advance, saying that there are uh, lots of inquiries in the Medicare space like this and that uh, this was, quote unquote, I don't know if they use the word routine, but that was the, the, the idea that they were trying to get across but this is gonna raise all sorts of questions about this particular transaction, but again, goes to the bigger question around diligence in the context of an IPO, or rather a, or rather a SPAC versus an IPO, SPAC. and what's required in terms of and, disclosure. Right. Andrew, what do you think on that? Because I mean, it seems to me like that is an obvious. If there's a Department of Justice investigation, and oh, by the way, Medicare, a government payor, is your biggest source of income, almost your, your primary and only source of income, that seems like it would certainly be something, if it was an IPO, you'd have to disclose, you think. Ooh, that there smells are crappy in this what day and age with it yeah. smells crappy with everything going on and, and you know, uh, did so retail, the poor retail people that, that might have been, you know, involved that, you know, in buying the, the spec that they, they, they didn't need to know, Andrew. I mean, and Chamath, Mr. Retail. That's what? Mr. Retail proponent, uh, you know, I'm a billionaire, but I love you and I'm one of you. It's just, it just reeks. That piece came out on February the 5th, and you can see that Joe Kernan basically <laughs> called it a scam in so many words. And, and, and here's a picture of what happened to it on the um, uh, 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 trading. And you can see it, it went, it, it dove. It had been going down, but it, it took a tremendous dive uh, on, on February the 5th and all the way down to about $7 a share. Now, what puzzled me then even more was on March the 16th, that same guy that I've never seen that was pumping it back in uh, October came out with a confirmation that this is a 10x stock that you need to jump into. This was basically the days after the release, or actually it was about 30 days after the release that the federal government was investigating them for basically lying to the public. And yet, here we go, one of our YouTubers is saying, this is a 10X stock. What's going on here? Um, who's getting paid by who? And what is happening in this stock market that we can have carnival barkers show up and pitch their stocks? I just saw on TV this morning an interview with uh, Lordstown, uh, the, the, the people making the electric truck. And I had seen this CEO a number of times. He's always in a yellow vest standing in his factory that's going to be producing these vehicles. And again, they were interviewed today, um, and uh, they just jumped on him that you, you aren't telling the truth, and that you had come on here months ago and said that you had all these confirmed orders, and now 
they aren't confirmed orders. And the guy said, well, I think you might have misunderstood me. And, and LeBeau said, no, we didn't misunderstand you. You said they were confirmed orders. No, he said they were just areas of interest. People at fleets and, and uh, saying they had an interest in our vehicle. They were not firm orders. This has got to stop, folks. And then when YouTubers take those little bits and pieces of information and say, this is, this is really a, a fantastic stock. I want you to, again, look at Clover. I did some research and I said, are they a substantial company? So I went and looked at their ratings of their policies where they are. They're only in about six states, but Atlanta, Georgia happens to be one of them. So I did some comparison there. And here's what I found. So I went here to uh, U.S. News Health. And they have a rating here of uh, Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans. And so I went in uh, and asked uh, for the highest star ratings. And I used the zip code 30342 because that's Atlanta and uh, Clover is located in Atlanta. They're not in many states. So as you can see, the highest rated one, and it's a five star, is uh, Kaiser Permenti. And then you, they have a number of plans, and then Senior Advantage, uh, United Healthcare, Aetna, Aetna, Humana, 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 Humana. And in order to find Clover, I had to go to page six. Here on page six, I find Clover's Health Choice H5141-046. And as you see, they have a three-star rating. The long and short of this is this has turned into a Carnival Barker's. When I was a young kid, we used to have the State Fair or the Carnival, and there'd be a guy standing out in front of a tent trying to bring you in to see, as I said, the, the bearded lady or the tallest man or the pig with two heads. That's what this is beginning to look like. And we need to get away from it. My advice to you on this, stay away. Stay away from Clover Health and be real suspicious of Karmath Holly Palnatira. He's... He's, he's doing this for his own benefit, and you need to be careful. Talk to you tomorrow.